I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied. Today we shall start our discussion on this new topic that is vapor compression refrigeration cycle. So, if we recall our previous classes, then we can understand that we have talked about vapor power cycles and we have discussed about those cycles essentially in the context of the development or generation of power. But today we shall discuss about this particular cycle that is vapor compression refrigeration cycle essentially a vapor power cycle, but the sole purpose is not to produce power but to produce refrigeration or refrigerating effect. So, as I said the sole purpose is to produce refrigerating effect. So, purpose of this particular cycle is to produce refrigerating effect. Now, let us look into this particular cycle and we shall try to analyze the processes those constitute this particular cycle. So, as we can see the sole purpose is to produce refrigerating effect and we had seen from our from our daily life experience from household refrigerator that a compartment needs to be at a temperature always which is say for example, at minus 10 degree Celsius or minus 5 degree Celsius temperature. So, you know if we schematically try to you know draw this particular cycle then essentially this is the space say for example, and this space should be always maintained at a temperature which is sub 0 temp at a sub 0 temperature. So, this is say cold space. So, if we need to maintain the temperature of this particular space at a temperature which is for example, if it is minus 10 degree Celsius then certainly you know that uh, to run this we need to have a few mechanical components electrical components. So, as those components will be running heat will be generated and so, we need to have always transfer of heat from this particular space to somewhere. So, as to the temperature of this particular space will be maintained at a sub 0 temperature. Now, this heat will be taken by a device that is called evaporator. So, this is Q in and if we recall the steam power cycle we had seen that the working fluid that we considered for that particular cycle is steam water or water steam water mixture or water. Now, in this particular cycle as well there is a working fluid, but that working fluid is not water that working fluid is a special type of working fluid and that working fluid is known as refrigerant. So, I am writing the working fluid is a refrigerant. This is a special type of working fluid we shall be discussing later what kind of property 
this particular fluid should have and this particular type of you know working fluid is you know given a name start with you know R and there are different you know types of refrigerants. We shall be discussing this particular you know this particular type of fluid later. Now, you know that working fluid will be on receiving heat from this cold space that working fluid will be evaporated and that is why this device is known as evaporated. So, this particular working fluid will be having a few you know distinctive properties and those properties we shall be discussing later in today's class. So, now on receiving heat that working fluid will be converted into vapor and essentially this evaporator is designed in such a way that at the exit of the evaporator we will be getting saturated vapor of that working fluid. So, if we give name say this is 1. So, at 1 if we write at 1 the refrigerant would be saturated refrigerant. saturated state and then as I said you that uh, we need to complete the processes and those processes we those pro those processes will eventually form a cycle. So, now that saturated liquid is taken into a compressor. So, this device is basically a compressor. So, this is a compressor on. So, this is a device which is work absorbing device. This is not like a turbine we had seen that turbine is a work producing device, but to run this compressor we need to supply certain energy always in the form of work. So, this is W in. So, we are supplying work to this compressor and then this saturated refrigerant saturated vapor to be precise this is not the saturated liquid. So, this is saturated vapor of this refrigerant because you know evaporator refrigerant will be evaporated. So, essentially we will be getting saturated vapor at the exit of the refrigerator and that is at the inlet of this compressor. Now, that the sole purpose of providing with this compressor is to develop or build up a pressure and we will be getting you know if this is state point 2. So, high pressure refrigerant vapor that would be available at the exit of the compressor. So, essentially compressor is a device which can handle two phase mixture certainly, but we had seen in a steam power cycle a pump is there to raise the pressure of the working fluid from a condenser pressure to the boiler pressure. So, now that high pressure saturated high pressure you know refrigerant vapor will be now taken into a into another device that is called condenser and while passing through the condenser it will release heat. So, Q out because we need to bring back the st original state of the evaporator, original state of the refrigerant at the inlet of the evaporator. So, evaporator on receiving heat from this cold space got evaporated, that refrigerant vapor that is saturated vapor is now taken into this compressor 
wherein you know we are supplying energy to run the compressor and the pressure of that you know uh, refrigerant will increase and that refrigerant at which is available at the exit of the compressor is now taken into this condenser. And by releasing heat while passing through the condenser, the refrigerant will be taken to another device. So, if we give name this is point 3. Now, question is in this case we could have you know install another one device to produce work and that is what we had seen in a steam power cycle. So, we could have you know in a steam power cycle we had seen that uh, turbine basically steam is allowed to expand. So, while steam is expanding it does work on the rotating part of the wheel and we are getting work output rather we get work output. So, here what is done instead of a turbine a special type of device that is considered because here the purpose is is not to produce work, but to get you know refrigeration or refrigerating effect. So, the special device which is considered here is known as throttle valve. So, this is known as throttle valve. And the sole purpose of providing this throttle valve is the sole purpose of providing with this throttle valve in the circuit is to you know expand that high pressure refrigerant that is coming that comes out from the condenser to the evaporating to the evaporator pressure. So, this is the you know total circuit. So, let me tell you once again we are getting high pressure refrigerant at the inlet of the condenser by releasing certain amount of heat from the condenser that refrigerant which is available at the exit of the condenser is taken into another device that is a special type of device perhaps you have studied in thermodynamics that is called throttle valve. So, while steam is you know passing through this throttle valve it will expand and this is a you know very fast process pressure will decrease and the purpose of providing with this throttle valve in the circuit is to reduce the pressure of the refrigerant from condenser pressure to the evaporator, pre evaporator pressure. So, this is the circuit. Now, as I said you that uh, sole purpose is to get the refrigerating effect and we have also discussed many times that whenever we consider any mechanical component or mechanical device and those mechanical components when, a, when those components are there in a circuit or in a cycle essentially if we need to measure the performance of the cycle itself we need to map all those processes in several thermodynamic planes. One of the most important thermodynamic planes is the T s diagram wherein we can represent all these processes. We have discussed that if we can represent any process in T s plane an area under the process line in T s plane will give us a the direct measurement of energy that is either added to the you know device or energy getting extracted from this device. So, following you know this discussion which we had earlier and also with this understanding let us now move to draw the T s diagram corresponding to this cycle rather corresponding to the processes those are there to constitute this cycle. So, if we try to draw the T s plane. So, now try to understand this point is 4 and this is 
this cycle, so cyclic process. What we have discussed that this evaporator will be designed in such a way that at this evaporator pressure and of course, when the circuit or cycle is designed certainly evaporator is designed to you know produce saturated refrigerant vapor. So, now state point 1 is saturated state that is saturated vapor of the refrigerant. right so that means let us consider point 1 is here so this is point 1 this is point 1 then again evaporator pressure is less than the pressure at which condenser is operating so we need to raise the pressure of the working fluid from evaporator pressure to the condenser pressure and that is why this compressor is there. So, the compressor will now compress this saturated vapor from state point 1 to state point 2 following if we assume that it is a reversible adiabatic compression. So, you know basically I should say that with this assumption that the process that will occur in this compressor is reversible adiabatic process. So, with this idealized assumption I should say that this is ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle. So, you know this is I am writing ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Why? Because you know in practical case it is very difficult to have a process which should be reversible adiabatic, but here we are considering this particular assumption and that is why we are writing this is ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle because this is an idealized assumption. Not only here we also will consider a few more assumptions to analyze this cycle and that is why I said considering a few idealized assumptions. So, now so you know this is so this is the evaporator pressure and so, this is state point 2 that is the compression process and if we consider this is the you know this pressure that is P condenser. and this is P evaporator. right? So, what we can understand that now one process 1 to 2 is reversible adiabatic process the compression process. Now, state point 2 is the exit state of compressor or inlet of the condenser. Now, that is there is basically you know condensation, but we have also discussed that even in the context of steam power cycle, we have discussed about this particular aspect that designing a designing a condenser which will allow us to have partial condensation is very difficult. So, here also the condenser is provided with this cycle or circuit to allow not the partial condensation, but to have 
you know condensation up to this saturated liquid. So, this this is state point 3 that is on the saturated liquid line and this is the process. Now, consider one important case that what about the process 3 to 4? Process 3 to 4 that we can see from the schematic that is the throttling process. The throttling process is a very fast process. So, it is basically you know kind of the expansion of the refrigerant vapor and the sole purpose is to reduce the pressure of the working fluid from condenser pressure to the evaporator pressure. Now, perhaps you have studied this particular you know topic in your basic thermodynamics course, the throttling is a very fast process. Since it is very uh, since it is a very fast process, so the intermediate states may not attain equilibrium, and hence it is very difficult to you know map this process by a solid line because it is very difficult to understand by which rather it is very difficult to you know get the path by which the state point 3 will now change from this to state point 4. Let me tell you once again throttling is a very fast process and the intermediate states may not attain equilibrium. Hence, if we need to map the process 3 to 4 in the T s plane here, then it is very difficult to get the path by which the state point 3 has now changed to state point 4. And hence, this particular process is shown by this dotted line. So, this is 4. So, this is basically 1, 2, 3, 4 that is the you know 4 different state points we could map in this T s plane. Let me tell you one thing because uh, whenever we discuss whenever we have discussed any cycle in the context of steam power cycle also in the context of you know gas power cycle, we have assumed that all the processes are internally reversible. Those processes may not be externally reversible, but we could map all those processes assuming that the processes are internally reversible and hence we could use this solid line. But in this particular case since throttling is a process which is not an internally reversible process as well. So, that is why this process is shown by this dotted line. What we can understand from this T s plane also from this you know schematic depiction of this ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle that the process that is there in this evaporator essentially you know conversion of state point 4 into state point 1. So, that process occurs at a constant pressure. So, we can see from this uh, T s plane. On the other hand, you know refrigerant vapors changes its state from state 2 to state 3 in this condenser and the process occurs at a constant pressure process at constant pressure. So, this is a, this is also a constant pressure process. So, these two processes are constant pressure processes while the process that is you know there in this throttle valve that is not we can say that the enthalpy is remaining constant all throughout the process, but enthalpy at state point 3 is equal to enthalpy at state point 4. So, enthalpy before throttling 
is equal to the enthalpy after throttling. So, basically you know if we write here that enthalpy before throttling is equal to the enthalpy of the working fluid after throttling. So, that means, H 3 equal to H 4. Maybe the enthalpy at intermediate states at intermediate state or enthalpy at many intermediate states may not be equal, but enthalpy before throttling is equal to enthalpy after throttling. So, what we can understand out of these four processes, two processes occur at a constant pressure while another one process that is very important process and interesting process as well, which is occurring at constant enthalpy. So, next objective should be to plot all these processes or map all these processes in another plane that is called pH plane. So, try to understand for the steam power cycles we had also tried to map all the processes in PV diagram, but here since two processes are at constant pr pressure and one process is at not constant enthalpy, but enthalpy before throttling is equal to enthalpy after throttling. So, we can map the processes now all these processes in this pH plane. pressure enthalpy you know plane. So, if we now map these processes, so again starting point should be 1 because that is the saturated vapor at the exit of the evaporator. So, if we consider this point is 1 right, certainly pressure would be you know uh, constant pressure. So, let us assume this is the pressure line. We really do not know where the where point 4 would be, but we can understand from this T s plane that you know point 4 is basically you know uh, it is. Uh, so, at the inlet of the evaporator the state point is not the saturated liquid. So, it is two phase mixture. So, now we have identified state point 1 here, then 1 to 2 that is again reversible adiabatic process. So, question is what would be the enthalpy of state point 2. So, now we also can take point 2 uh, towards right or where the where point 2 should be there in pH plane. So, if we apply this T d s relation that is T d s equal to d h minus V d p. So, process one to two is reversible adiabatic. So, d s equal to 0 isentropic process. So, if d s equal to 0 then d h equal to V d p. Compression process this fellow is always positive and what about this quantity because d p is also positive for a compression process, because the sole purpose of having this process is to raise the pressure in the direction of 
working fluid flow. So, dp is positive. So, essentially dh is positive that means enthalpy will increase. So, from this you know discussion now we can map we can identify state point 2 say this is state point 2. So, this is state point 2 what about process 2 to 3 that is at a constant pressure process, but point C as I said you that partial condensation is not possible. So, we can have the process 2 to 3 that is a constant pressure process and this point is 3 right. Now, 3 to 4 is basically you know the throttling process. So, we need to map this 3 to 4 process. So, what I said you that enthalpy at state point 3 is equal to enthalpy at state point 4. So, that means, this process should be like this. So, this is point 4 right. So, this is the pH uh, representation. So, representation of all these processes in pH diagram or pH plane. So, we have discussed now I forgot to discuss one important point question is comfortably I could locate point 4 here. Now, where is the guarantee that point 4 should not be closer to the saturated liquid line because then if point 4 is closer to the saturated liquid line certainly entropy at state point 4 will be the deciding factor to locate point 4 in this plane. So, if we can somehow get a clue about the change in entropy of this particular process from there we can comfortably locate point 4 in this plane. Now, let us again do this for this particular case. So, again for process 3 to 4, we can write this T d s equal to d h minus V d p right. Now, state point 3 and state point 4 as I said you that if we if you you know start your process at state point 3 and if you go to state point 4 as I said you that enthalpy at state point 4 is equal to enthalpy of state point 4. So, that is equal to 0. What about other this you know this two V specific volume is always positive. What about d p? Because if we go back to this, this is an you know this is a throttle valve acting like an expander. So, basically you know pressure drops in the direction of the flow of the refrigerant, then d p is negative. So, this is negative. So, essentially you try to understand this is positive, this is negative. So, total is negative which is again multiplied with negative so positive. So, that means, from this we get d s equal to positive. So, that means, for a pro for the process 3 to 4 that is throttling process as you move from state point 3 to state point 4 entropy will increase. Though, I could locate this point 4 comfortably by this but this is the correct. So, that means, entropy increases as you know the process 3 to 4 you know takes place in this expander. So, with this understanding now let me discuss one important thing that. So, even for the you know steam power cycle 
we had tried to compare the performance of Rankine cycle and its you know modified versions with the Carnot cycle. So, again it would be wise to again see if we try to compare the performance or if we compare the process or all these processes with the Carnot cycle. So, let me tell you once again if it is a Carnot cycle. So, if we go to the next slide. So, if we try to draw and we had seen So, this is what you know just I am redrawing the T s diagram here. So, we can see 4 to 1 constant pressure evaporation, 1 to 2 reversible adiabatic compression, 2 to 3 constant pressure you know process that is occurring inside the or in a condenser and 3 to 4 that is the throttling process. So, this is the throttling process. Now, had it been a Carnot cycle then certainly the processes would have been different and we now discuss the if the cycle you know had we tried to measure the performance using the Carnot cycle what would have been the differences. So, now let us consider this aspect as we had seen the Carnot cycle again this reversible adiabatic process would re will remain reversible adiabatic, but instead of a dry compression that we can see because you know this ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle this 1 to 2 is basically reversible adiabatic compression. So, this is dry compression why it is dry because try to understand the refrigerant or working fluid available at the inlet of this compressor is saturated. It is not a two phase mixture. So, basically it is called dry you know compression. Dry compression or dry compressions are preferred to the wet compression because of several uh, advantages that I will be discussing today. So, basically as I said you we are now trying to compare all these processes with those had we considered this cycle to be a Carnot cycle. Then the this compression process will be the reversible adiabatic process, but the actual process between these two temperature limits will be like this. So, this is 1 prime say this is 2 prime. Similarly, you know instead of a throttle valve we need to use a reversible adiabatic expander to have this reduction in pressure from condenser pressure to this evaporator pressure. So, that means this process 3 to 4 will be again this. So, this is 4 prime. So, now if I write 1 prime, 2 prime, 3, 4 prime. 
So, this is the Carnot cycle, right? Whereas, you know, ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle that is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, what are the differences? First of all, the compression process is now wet compression. So, this compression 1 prime to 2 prime that is again reversible adiabatic compression but that is wet compression. Why it is wet? Because you can understand point or state point 1 state of the working fluid corresponding to this point 1 prime is not a saturated vapor. So, this is a two phase mixture. So, that time compressor you know needs to handle this two phase mixture. Now, handling two phase mixture is indeed a challenging task why it is so I will be discussing soon and 3 to 4 prime now that is the process that will occur in a reversible adiabatic expander. So, this process is also reversible adiabatic process. So, 3 to 4 prime will occur in a reversible adiabatic ex expander. because the sole purpose is to reduce the pressure. So, why Carnot cycle is not preferred? Because the most important part is you know this compression process that is wet compression. What will happen? Because we know compressibility of liquid and vapor you know is not same. So, liquid and vapor you know since the compressibility of these two is different than liquid and vapor being compressed differently will create an very you know detrimental phenomenon that is known as you know lubricant wash out phenomenon. What is this? First of all since now, had we considered Carnot cycle, in this case compressor needs to handle two phase mixture and liquid and vapor these two are having different compressibility. So, liquid will now will rise with the piston that is the working fluid will now when it would be compressed the liquid refrigerant that would be there in the cylinder head and when the piston is rising and that liquid you know refrigerant will create or will damage the you know valves and etcetera. Not only that as I said you that liquid vapor being compressed differently the liquid uh, phenomenon will be there wherein liquid molecule will try to penetrate into the gap between piston and cylinder wall. So, typically the gap between piston and cylinder wall is filled with a lubricant. Now, when that liquid molecule will be there or the when liquid molecule will you know penetrate into this you know passage that will you know wash away the lubricants and this phenomenon is known as lubricant wash away phenomena. So, considering these two comp wet compression is not preferred and rather dry compression that is you know 1 to 2 is preferred and that is why a variant of the cycle ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle is preferred over the Carnot cycle. So, now with this let us try to discuss that essentially what we are looking for by studying this particular cycle we need to obtain the refrigerating effect or refrigeration effect. What is that? 
refrigerating effect or refrigeration effect is essentially if we look at the schematic what would be the extraction of energy from this cold space per unit mass flow rate of the refrigerant. So, that would be the refrigerating effect. Typically that particular you know effect is represented or expressed in terms of tons of refrigeration. I will be discussing this. So, let me tell you once again we are studying this particular cycle essentially to understand the refrigerating effect. What does it mean? It means the amount of energy that would be extracted from the cold space per unit mass flow rate of this working substance that is refrigerant. So, now if we consider this particular part because any cycle as I said you finally, we need to measure the performance and the sole performance sole purpose of this cycle is to get the refrigerating effect at the cost of some input energy that is the work input or work added to the compressor. So, we are supplying this much amount of energy to run this cycle and at the cost of that input energy we are getting some desired output or desired effect that is the refrigerating effect. So, now let us consider steady state Uh, steady flow equation. If we assume that the steady state has reached and if we consider that 1 kg of the working fluid that is refrigerant. So, then if we just apply the steady state steady flow equation across all the components, if we go back to this slide if we assume that processes all the processes are now at a steady state, I mean all processes got steady state uh, you know uh, situation scenario and then if we consider the working fluid is 1 kg. So, per kg of working fluid if we apply that steady state steady flow equation across this evaporator what we can write? We can write that So, evaporator we can write H 4 Q in equal to H 1. So, therefore, Q in equal to H 1 minus H 4. So, that is what is very important H 1 minus H 4 right. So, uh, this is of course, a unit is kilo joule per kg. So, this is kilo joule per kg. Now, this much amount of energy, this much amount of heat, this evaporator is taking per kg of refrigerant flow at the cost of some input energy and that input energy is the work input or work addition to the compressor. So, if we apply steady state steady flow equation across the compression. Then we can write if we go back to this schematic depiction, then if we apply the steady flow energy equation or steady flow equation across this computer across this compressor we can write if, I mean just we are writing this and we can write H 1. plus W in equal to H 2 that is W in equal to H 2 minus H 1. So, now try to understand. So, this is this is basically input energy in the form of work. So, this is input energy and this is the desired effect. Right? So, we can define now 
coefficient of performance for any refrigeration cycle we cannot define efficiency that we have discussed. Now, you also have studied uh, when you have studied second law of thermodynamics. So, coefficient of performance COP that is desired effect to the input power or input energy I should say. So, that means, this is h 1 minus h 4 divided by h 2 minus h 1. This is also the unit is kilojoule per kg. So, try to understand this is the mathematical expression of the coefficient of performance and essentially per unit mass flow rate of working fluid the change in enthalpy is giving us an estimate about the desired effect and input energy. So, if COP is higher then the you know uh, performance of the refrigeration cycle will be better. So, higher is the COP better uh, better the performance of the refrigeration cycle is. So, that is what we can understand. So, we have to calculate COP to get an estimate about the performance of the cycle, higher will be the value of COP, better the performance of the cycle will be. So, now what is refrigerating effect that is also very important. So, though I have already discussed about this particular term refrigerating effect or refrigeration effect. What is this? And this is typically denoted by this symbol R. Now, what is refrigeration effect? So, this is essentially you know had we applied steady flow steady state steady flow equation across this evaporator. So, this is H 1 minus H 4 kilojoule per kg. So, this is h 1 minus h 4. So, as I said few minutes back that the amount of energy that would be extracted by the evaporator by this evaporator. Let me go back to the schematic. So, the amount of energy that would be extracted by this evaporator for getting the state of the working fluid changed from state point 4 to state point 1 that is the refrigerating effect. And that refrigerating effect mathematically is h 1 minus h 4. So, this is the refrigerating effect. Now, let me tell you one thing we shall be solving one numerical problem from this topic as well, but if we try to go back to this T s diagram we can see that state point 4 that is at the exit of the throttle valve or at the inlet to the you know evaporator it is the two phase mixture. So, we need to know what would be the liquid vapor or liquid you know or quality of the you know refrigerant at the inlet of this uh, evaporator. So, if we try to uh, if we look at this T s plane carefully then we can write if we go to this next slide then we can write you know that H 4 that is the you know enthalpy at state point 4 should be equal to. So, this is at constant pressure and this is P evaporator right. So, we can write this equal to H you know uh, so, basically what we can write, so this is H 1 
plus x four. So this is H f at p condenser equal to x four H f g at p condenser. So this is uh, p evaporator. Sorry, this is p evaporator. So, this is P evaporator right. So, essentially this is uh, H 4 that is H f. So, this is H f plus H f g. Now, what we can write x 4? Therefore, we can write x 4 equal to H 4 minus H f at P evaporator divided by H f g at P evaporator. Now, what about uh, if we go to the next slide, if we go to the next slide, then we can write that x 4 that is h 4 minus h f at p evaporator divided by h f g at p evaporator. What about h 4? Because we have discussed that you know we have discussed that H 4 equal to H 3 that is enthalpy of the working fluid after throttling is equal to enthalpy of the working fluid before throttling. And what about H 3 that is H f at the condenser pressure that we can see from this stage diagram. So, this is H 3 or minus H f at P evaporator divided by H f g at P evaporator. So, this is H f at P condenser minus H f at P evaporator divided by H f at P evaporator. So, this x 4 this x 4 this quantity is very important and it is known as you no know, flash gas fraction. So, this is known as flash gas you know fraction. What does it mean? So, basically you know so a uh, mass fraction of liquid in this liquid vapor mixture. So, basically this is if I write, so this is mass fraction of liquid in li liquid vapor mixture. So, this is important to know to the designer who will be designing this evaporator because you can see that the inlet condition of the working fluid is two phase mixture before it enters to this evaporator. So, now the designers should know the quality and that is what we could establish here and that is known as mass fraction of liquid in the liquid vapor mixture and known as fly gas fraction. So, to summarize today's discussion, we have discussed about the ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle. We have tried to understand all the processes constitute this cycle. We have mapped all those processes in two different thermodynamic planes. From there, we have tried to quantify what is the coefficient of performance and the refrigerating effect. In this context, we have also discussed about several critical issues which are very important to know for about, about this particular cycle. 
with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you.